Synod, uh, the Sazen Synod of 1998 up to 2000. And that's when we had the Synod, uh, a special Diocesan Synod on the problem of ethnic conflict in Rwanda. We had uh, uh, an experience of uh, listening to the suffering of the people. And um, in listening to the suffering of, of the people, uh, we had uh, proposals for mutual understanding and seek solution for reconciliation and peace so that we can march together. It helped us to march together so far in uh, reconciliation and peace. And in all this, we are guided by the spirit of prayer and enlightened by the word of God, right from the basic Christian communities up to a wider community of the diocese. I am reminded that uh, the church in the Amasaya region made a decision in 1975 to make the basic Christian communities the mainstay of evangelization in the Eastern African uh, area, where emphasis is put on uh, personal relationships, communal uh, togetherness, uh, family bonds, solidarity, Christian belonging, sharing together, working together, and celebrating together. The church in Africa has to keep these realities of, uh, or realities which relate to the basic Christian communities alive and vibrant so that uh, they may enrich the church and make her uh, an evangelizing uh, force in the modern society. Uh, this is therefore a mode of participating well in the synodal process, which is expected to reach its climax in uh, 2023. The experience of the church in Africa is going to have an influence of the internal understanding of the universal church. And uh, secondly, the pastoral challenges which are peculiar to the African church are going to uh, receive attention from the magisterium and possible lead to some new decisions and orientations. And for, for us also, it's an opportunity to embrace our brothers and sisters in the periphery, including their concerns and their experiences. So far, the process and uh, where we are now is that uh, after reading the document uh, on synodality from Rome and uh, following the instructions in the Episcopal Conference, we, the last uh, ordinary assembly, we discussed about it. A committee for preparing the synod was set up, composed of uh, priests, religious, lay people, the youth, uh, in order to start preparing. Now, they are going down to the community that they represent in order to begin the consultation uh, at all levels. It is all accompanied by prayer, and uh, so far we can see the community ready to listen, to discuss together how to build the church and how to improve our pastoral work and evangelization. We chose or uh, appointed a, a person who will uh, accompany and collaborate and uh, coordinate this process along with three of other collaborators, therefore constituting an archdiocesan team uh, of the Synod. This team 
uh, was uh, uh, empowered to take act, uh, reach out to various groups in the Archdiocese, trying to reach out to the 138 parishes of the Archdiocese. And uh, for that matter, uh, we are comfortable that uh, all the parishes and designated parishes are well poised for uh, the synodal process. Some of the major steps we have taken is a pre-synodal uh, preparation meeting where the three bishops in the Mombasa Metropolitan, uh, which is made up of Mombasa, Malindi and Garissa Dauces, came together and we had a, a half-day talk from a member of the Secretariat team in Nairobi. And then this was, you know, led to the uh, issuance of the decree that was done on the 17th of October. And as you could see, I did it in one of the very remote parishes in Witu. And uh, it was significant in the sense that we are trying to reach uh, to the grassroots or where our Christians are. Another step we have taken is, of course, to appoint the, the lead person and the lead team of this synodality uh, process. And um, they have also come up with a translation of the preparatory document uh, into Swahili language. In fact, some, the, some other dioceses are already asking for that translation. And uh, then uh, the team has already started moving to, first of all, to the Deanery uh, Pastoral Councils, which brings together the clergy, religious, and lay uh, members, representatives, including animators of the PMC and the youth leaders, just to give them an induction of what this synodality is all about. The most important uh, aspects or uh, experiences that we have captured is that first of all, uh, as soon as the people or the faithful were informed of the uh, Synod, they were very enthusiastic. They received it as a, a moment of grace for the church. and. Uh, they are more than willing to participate in the synodal process, uh, which they see, they, they see as an opportunity to enrich and uh, reactivate the evangelizing uh, power of the church. It is participatory, it's taking more time to prepare, and that gives us uh, also time to address and listen to the various groups in the church. I remember in one of the parishes, I met girls who are boarding in one of our hostels, and they're girls who are both Christians and a few Muslims, and I was just listening to their concerns, and that gave me a new horizon, what some of our girls are going through. And I think that is a very essential aspect of the Synod. And uh, where we are heading to, we hope to identify those various groups especially those whose voices are hardly listened to, in order to be able to listen to them. We are reaching out to the people who are far from the church. We have uh, organized different movements that uh, go as far as marketplaces, bars in the streets, different social places, uh, visit traditional healers and diviners, uh, going out to Christian denominations and churches, uh, Protestant churches, Evangelicals, Pentecostals, even uh, uh, other religious communities, Muslims and others, so that uh, we can uh, listen to everyone. Uh, the people of God are listening to the Holy Spirit, first of all, by praying the synodal prayer, as, as well as uh, uh, relating and uh, discussing together 
about uh, the synodal process and uh, also listening to the Holy Spirit, who is the prime mover of the synod. On uh, Sundays and every time they have mass, at the end they actually recite that prayer. That's also a moment to listen to the Holy Spirit. And then we also have uh, recollections where various groups uh, meet for a day's recollection. And then uh, listening to the word of God, especially in small groups where people can uh, give their insights, uh, especially in the small Christian communities, but also in a round table where sometimes even as a bishop I'm seated and just listen to the parish or church council. Uh, by listening to the voice of the people, uh, we are also giving the Holy Spirit an opportunity uh, to speak to us. Prayer is very important in this synod process. It is what distinguishes the synod from other meetings and the symposium. In prayer, each, each one listens to the Holy Spirit and the inspiration each one gets from the Holy Spirit put together with the inspiration of the others, it gives a, a firm and a wider inspiration to the community. We want to reach that point of uh, uh, making sure that the Holy Spirit guides the community to reach the resolutions and the decisions in order to march together. The Holy Spirit is inviting the local church in Dar es Salaam to grow in synodality by, first of all, striking a common path of journeying together and uh, participating in the life and mission, and mission of the church. The entire church is called to be part and parcel of the process. We see uh, ourselves being invited uh, to really uh, go out of our comfort zones and to embrace our Christian communities, especially in the rural communities where they walk long distances even to uh, participate in uh, paraliturgical services, live alone masses. Uh, the, this is again for us uh, a sign of the time that uh, God uh, is speaking to the church, the universal church, and listening also and speaking to the local churches uh, to, to address some concerns which probably in the past have not been given particular attention. Like for example, uh, the ministry or the apostolate towards promoting better understanding with the other Christians from other denominations, uh, addressing the whole uh, apostolate on uh, interreligious dialogue. And as you know, Malindi has a very significant presence of Muslims and also indigenous religions. Now, we, we have to learn how to coexist with them. That also means we must embrace some of their struggles and aspirations. We feel that the Holy Spirit is uh, inviting us to uh, improve and uh, to renew our way of doing pastoral work. More often we teach the message of the gospel and uh, the teaching of the church. People listen to us, but this time we want to listen to the people. We want to listen to the people to, to know how do they understand the gospel message? How do they appreciate? What uh, are they not appreciating? What are the difficulties they have? What do they propose? What uh, do they need? Uh, so that we can uh, be able to respond to the needs of the people with the message of the gospel.
I would uh, like to invite my fellow bishops to take this synodal process as an, a moment of grace, as an opportunity to again listen to the Holy Spirit. Because even as bishops, we must listen to the Holy Spirit and uh, hearken to what he is telling us to, 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 to undertake in the Church of Christ. I would uh, propose to my fellow bishops and uh, pastors to listen what the people say, our Christians, other denominations, other religions, the public in general. We, we govern the church and guide the people in holiness to God. But uh, what do you, they think about our governance and our way of doing? What do they need and what do they propose? My humble message uh, as a young bishop in this uh, conference in Kenya is that uh, uh, we should embrace this as a sign of the time. And listening does not mean approval. Uh, we listen first, we discern, but uh, in terms of what is approved or agreed, that is also another phase of uh, you know, this process. Um, uh, my message also is that uh, uh, we should not just look at this as, as a process of uh, documentation to be taken to another level. We should also use this experience for internal renewal of the same church, uh, the same local church, the same diocese, so that the results of this process, uh, we become the main consumers. So let us be open to what the uh, Spirit is uh, saying to the church in Africa.